Howdy y'all, Joe Hills here, recording as I always do in Nashville, Tennessee. And as you can tell, I've got my little amber waves of grain here. Nothing quite as big as the farms I've built on previous Hermitcraft servers, but it's generally done a good job of keeping me fed. Even so, sometimes the human heart needs to do more than be fed. Maybe that's the stomach's job. It's the heart's job to dream and, you know, to uh, possibly even soar. Possibly. Or maybe it's just a snore. I don't know. Dream and snore and it's all connected. Anyway, I know that I need to get a whole bunch of thatch for some of the thatched roofs on the outbuildings over here. So we're going to have a uh, stable in this back corner here that actually needs to be a lot larger than these uh, are marked out. These walls were kind of early days, kind of just like broadly speaking. Where does this need to go? You know what? It actually needs to go a lot further out. And so I've got some logs here thinking about setting up the uh, carriage house and all that because the carriage itself is, should be pretty huge. So looking at the map, this should come out to about here. What is that noise? Is that a spider? Maybe he's under me because, you know, why wouldn't he be? But yeah, so we need a carriage house that's about this big. Um, going to be pretty significant in terms of, like, its doors are going to be pretty centrally located. And they should be, in theory, big enough for a carriage to fit through, which maybe that's not it. Let's go ahead and pull these out a little bit more here. So what we'll probably do is we'll have the big fancy carriage house banded doors in here, and then we'll use, like, a Minecraft door around it. We're going to need some walls around here, probably uh, some sort of, I don't know, I liked using the white bone blocks because they kind of have a decrepit, aged look about them that I think really pays off. But yeah, these outbuildings here are also going to need thatched roofs, I'm thinking, so because they're supposed to be more run down and like, more like sheds and not as permanent feeling as the castle itself. So... Anyway, in order to get that thatch, what we actually need to do is we need to run back this way, grab a bunch of seeds, and start planting a big old field. But where are we going to plant a big old field? Do we want it to be within a uh, chunk loading distance of our other stuff? So that way, uh, you know, the things actually grow? That would make sense to me. So kind of just eyeballing it, the clear place might be right here. So why don't we go grab our seeds and start laying down some, um, I don't know, what do you call them, rows? Yeah. Rows by any other name would still be just as wheat. You know, we got a full day of planting under our belts, and this is not a bad turnout for it. We got some, uh, I kind of started off with this kind of thinking like, oh, it would be cool if I made, like, little islands of wheat, and then planted the wheat, like, where the ground was raised up. And so then I was like, maybe I'll do over here next, or whatever. You know what? It's a good time to be up in the sky on account of the zombies coming out, but let's quickly kind of pan around. Boom. So that, that right there, that's like a good start, but it's a little bit small. Same thing out of this. This little small. But I kind of feel like maybe the uh, top of this area here, like I could really just fill in a whole bunch of this with wheat. I took some time to plant some seeds, and now you can clearly tell the wheat has grown, and I have shown that this plan is working well. I figure I may as well. Dang it, I already said well. This is what I get for improvising poetry, guys. It's not a good idea. It never works. Don't do it. Just kidding. Follow your dreams' hearts, or your heart's dreams. Whichever is weirder, or normaler. I don't know. Not the good advice hour with Joe Hills. That would be too much, too much good advice. If you listen to good advice for an hour, you would be terrified by, like, how much your life was out of alignment with what you should be doing. So 45 blocks of wheat seems like a reasonable amount, but let's see how far this actually gets us on our thatched roof. If we just have this actually kind of come out straight this way, can we actually make good work of 45 blocks? Thank you, chicken, for your contribution there. Okay, so that's 14. It looks like we're going to need to basically double what we started with, so... Let's go ahead and hop up here and just verify that. I was thinking that for the thatched roof, if it was at kind of a slope, that might be the best thing. But really, if I'm going to be building this with 
hay bales. Does having hay bales for the horses inside the building even, like, make logical sense? Oh, wait, and I need to go out way further. Okay, maybe I've just got, like, a ton of hay bales worth of weed at this point to decorate with, and I should really just plan on using a bunch of, uh, you know, that purple tile for the roof in here. That, that just might be the safer, smarter choice. So, let's go ahead and tear this down and get started on that. Time skip! If you can't tell from the sun's declination, I'm inclined to share the information that I have made some progress on our little stable over there. You can see it's a little baby stable roof po poking up, up there. Let's go ahead and give it a visit. I figure if we're really good flyers, we can sweep through the... Oh, we can't. We are not good flyers. Okay, so this is what I've got put together. The book really does not describe this at all. It basically says, hey, it's a stable with a carriage inside, or it's a carriage house with a carriage inside. So I decided to use the same roof that we use up there, the tile roof, same bone blocks that we use for some of the internal walls, because they do have that creepy bone feel. Um, I kind of decided, okay, this is like, it's got a big door, but it's got a little door inside of the big door. Mm, I'm not sure I love it, but I feel like it kind of works well enough. And then inside here, we would have a place that I could put a marker that would represent the carriage and a horse. This this space, it feels like I could do more with it, but I'm not sure exactly what. Doors closed. We come out here, and this just, it just fills a space, you know? It accomplishes something. You come up this, like, for players, the first time they would see the carriage house would be if they either broke through here which does give them a clear, like, oh, hey, there's something over there worth investigating. And even though it doesn't necessarily have a ton of information or interesting stuff in the game, it does set them up where they can see from there into the chapel. They can see this building. They can see this building. So it, it pulls them past the gate because nothing of interest over here would otherwise be visible through that gate. So I think that that in and of itself is valuable. So you come in here and you're like, oh, that building was a red herring. But, oh wait, there's more stuff. Let's go check it out. So I think that's pretty cool. If I was going to look at other ways that players might first see that building, it would be if they managed to go all the way through this hallway into the chapel. And the first time you see it would be out there, but you don't have a way to get out there from the chapel. But you do also see that there's no comparable building over there, which I think is at least valuable. Even if the players never get to that building, they get the sense that, like, this is a grounds. This is this whole castle is a complex complex, and there are things that are symmetrical and things that are asymmetrical. You know, they start looking up here, they're like, oh, hey, that has arches. Oh, and hey, this doesn't. Huh. I wonder why. Or why not, you know? Kind of excites the imagination. The lack of a comparable building over here is just as valuable now as the creation of this building. So, you know, that's good, because I don't want to build a second building. I, I do feel like it could use a little bit more detail. So, definitely, if you guys think of anything that you think would punch it up, I would love to see it in the comments. I might go make a second pass on that. So the only other real way that anyone's going to see that building outside of the context of the game might just be hermits flying overhead. So if I'm a hermit and I'm flying over this castle, does that building look okay? I mean, or if I just land on the walls here. I mean, there's nothing clearly wrong with it, which, I mean, is a low bar. But, you know, sometimes, if you imagine, like, a set of monkey bars, sometimes you have to have, like, a low bar that you climb up to get to the other monkey bars. So maybe that low bar is a valuable stepping stone toward overall productivity. I don't know. Speaking of low bars, you know, in terms of support structures, I have, oh, I was going to land right there on top of those creepers. That's, okay. I was going to talk about how this pillar goes all the way down to there, and this one has a shelf with a bunch of creepers all over the place. Dang it, creepers. This, this pillar here does not go all the way down. And I was thinking it might be good to extend it further down and kind of create a physical feeling of support. Although maybe just having something that reinforces the shelf back there. Like if we put in some sort of arched stone or something. 
Man. Like an arch that goes down like that. I don't know. I, I don't I, I've been thinking like, okay, well, what's on the other side of this um, little carriage house? And is it worth fixing up? So, let me know what you think about how I should deal with that pillar. Maybe I should just thicken the stone that it rests on so it doesn't look quite so precipitous. I do kind of like having this little cave in here. And removing the torches now that it's, you know, pretty much done could actually be cool because it would look a lot darker at night. You may have noticed that this episode was mid-roll ad-free, and that's thanks to our wonderful Patreon backer, Karis Sophia. In lieu of that mid-roll ad, I will now read a poem that I wrote myself. Now, most of my poems have truly never been published anywhere. This one starts off with a little bit of a parody of Frere Jacques that I actually did sing in an earlier Hermitcraft 4 episode. So some of you guys might be like, what? I've heard some of this before. Believe me. You've only heard the, uh, I don't know, first, uh, eight lines. You know, this might not even be the version I ended up singing, but, uh, yeah. Anyway, here we go. Are you depressed? Are you depressed? Pressure plate? Pressure plate? Wire is unpowered. Wire is unpowered. Heart of slate. Heart of slate. I'm a stone cold, slate slabbed pressure plate. You can dump on me your baggage, bestow on me your hate, but to splinter or to falter, you know that I ain't a balsa-willed wood-slabbed pressure plate. Are you balsa? Are you balsa? Pressure plate? Pressure plate? Weak-willed and compliant, weak-willed and compliant, actuate, actuate. Actuate? Act your age. Leave this world of material. Your desire is a virus. What you need is ethereal. It's about people, the soul of connection. But you're all about compression and deflection. You're alpha. Anyway, until next time, y'all, this is Joe Hills from Nashville, Tennessee. Keep adventuring.